Hello and welcome to episode 6 of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. This is Brandon. This is Brad. We would like to actually talk about the new format we have for the for the podcast. Uh, we listened to the first few and we kind of thought that it was kind of sporadic, jumping in all, all over the place. Uh, Random we, at times. Yeah, and we uh, got some feedback from some listeners and they wanted to hear not only more uh, video game stories but also we had feedback where we should have a structured format and so I believe we've come up with a pretty nice structure. Yeah I'm very excited about this podcast. I uh, can't wait to get into it. Uh, it just makes me more excited for all the future podcasts that we're going to do. There's a lot of things we could do with the show and we're real excited about it. Yeah. So our format goes as follows. We're going to open it up with uh, tales of treasure hunting we'll, the format will be tales of treasure hunting uh, then we'll introduce a game that we've actually recently played together uh, talk about that game uh, we'll do a top five list everyone loves lists so we'll each week will be different for the top five the next thing we want to talk about is actually a biggest loser challenge uh, Brad and I have decided that we wanted to have the podcast set in place to help us lose weight so we could hold ourselves accountable uh, during this segment. We could talk about what we did in the gym, or what kind of cardio we did. We could talk about things we weren't supposed to eat, things that we ate that we didn't like, or just stuff like that. Uh, then what we also want to do is incorporate a challenge to the audience to the listening audience and we'll get into that later and we also want to have story time uh, we would like to incorporate some stories into our podcast of you know our crazy relatives and our lives uh, I don't know if we'll have a story time for you guys this week but next week for sure we'll have story time yeah and also what we're going to do is we're going to do every five episodes we're going to try to dedicate it to a game show so as you guys heard with Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia Episode 4, King of Nostalgia, Brandon was the host, Matthew and I were the contestants. We're going to be trading off every five episodes with, you know, not just nostalgia, but maybe a horror quiz, a music quiz, video game, you know, video game music quiz, things like that. And it's going to be very fun, and we're going to have guests on the show as well. And uh, we hope you look forward to it as much as we are. So if you are interested in being a guest, please leave us a comment on our Facebook page, Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia, and we'll get in touch with you. Definitely. So uh, let's go for treasure hunting. I called Brad earlier uh, yesterday after I went to Dimple Records in Elk Grove and actually found a Super Nintendo game that we already have, but... Uh, perhaps we could have turned a profit on it so I tried to call him he didn't pick up called him again didn't pick up uh, the reason why I hesitated is because they wanted $15 for this game which was Super Metroid which isn't a bad price but I didn't know if we could make somewhat of a profit on it how much it was going for online so that's why I was trying to get in contact with Brad uh, he never picked up so I went ahead and hid the game just in case we wanted to go back and get it so, actually, I did go to Dimple today, um, and... On, I went, the El, on Elk Grove? No. Oh. I went to the Folsom one, and I got some pretty nostalgic movies, so I just wanted to hold them up, and Brad could describe them, and guess how much I paid for them. I removed the used sticker price already. I have, I bought four movies. The first one is Gremlins 2 The New Batch. Uh, awesome movie. I still think the first one was better. The The second one kind of, to me anyway, felt like I felt like they jumped the shark by introducing many types of gremlins. You had the electricity gremlin, the spider gremlin, which was pretty awesome. The spider gremlin was badass. It was scary too. Uh, not as scary as Stripe though. Stripe was still, he's still the number one gremlin. And that female gremlin just sucked. I thought you found her hot. Uh, no. Maybe her lips. <laughs> she had good DSLs. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So how much do you think I paid for this? I would say five ninety nine. Five ninety nine for Gremlins two. I caught it for three ninety nine. Oh, that's tight. Next movie, <laughs> Balls of Fury. <laughs> A Fast Furious comedy. Have you seen that movie? Yes, and I, I love the movie. The, the movie's pretty tight. I like how, uh, who, is that Dan Fogler? Is that his name? Uh, I'm reading the back, and I'm not seeing who is it. It's not going to be on the front. He's not a big name to be on the front. <laughs> you have to look on the bottom here. Dan Fogler. It is Dan Fogler. Listed before Christopher Walken, <laughs> which is a shame. Christopher Walken, he's, he should be the star of any movie. But my favorite part of this movie is when Dan Fogler pulls out his paddle and starts playing Def Leppard to it. Yep, Rock of Ages. Yeah. I I'm, listen. I, it's funny. Right when I got out of the store and I put my iPod on random, Rock of Ages came on. That's tight. That, that's like my favorite part in the whole movie. Or uh, the German guy who who played by Officer Dangle. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty funny. But but when he gets out his uh, ping pong paddle and starts playing Rock of Ages on it, that that was tight. Yeah. That was my favorite part. Guess how much I paid for this? Two ninety nine. That is correct. <laughs> <laughs> Worth every penny. <laughs> Next we have oh the watch. Uh, that that was a pretty funny movie. Have you seen it yet? No, I haven't seen it. Okay, so I won't tell you much about it, but that that's a pretty cool movie. Oh, and it's got the blockbuster sticker on it too. <laughs> <laughs> Is that why it's nostalgic? Because it has the blockbuster sticker. <laughs> yeah, the rental exclusive. <laughs> they still have those. They still make those. Yeah. <laughs> so the only reason I got it, uh, one because of the price, and two because I've never seen it, and it's got Jonah Hill and Vince Vaughn in it, which should be pretty funny. Guess how much I paid for it. Uh, it's kind of new movie, but probably not a big seller. I'm gonna go six ninety nine. Now they were the next cheapest one besides this one was nine ninety nine. I got this for two ninety nine. Wow! Because it was a rental exclusive, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I should have checked to see if the DVD is in there, but it probably is. And the final movie was the only new movie I bought. It was brand new in the package. Had to buy it. Kickboxer, tight. Uh, Jean Claude Van Damme is kickboxer. And... <laughs> kickboxer. <laughs> you pulled a Brandon. <laughs> yeah, Brandon slash Homer Simpson. Yeah, kickboxer with Tung Po, and they have uh, you know the, the brother who gets shot with the in the wheelchair, and he they call him <laughs> Noxu Cow. He doesn't and... get shot. No. Well, I'm thinking of wheelchair Tony, but <laughs> yeah, he get Tong Po just tears him up and paralyzes him, and uh, yeah, they end up calling Jean Claude Van Damme Naksu Cal, which I think means Supreme White Warrior or White Warrior or something. Yeah, that sounds a little too KKK Supreme White Warrior, <laughs> maybe just White Warrior. <laughs> okay, but uh, yeah, I remember Zian, his trainer, does a hurricane kick when we were really big into Street Fighter. When we saw this, oh yeah, he does a hurricane kick in place and he doesn't move anywhere, and we <laughs> thought that was the tightest thing we've ever seen on a movie. Yeah, that was heck of tight. Yeah, we, we must have rewound it like twenty times to yeah. watch that hurricane kick. Yeah, Tong Po, that rapist. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was tight. So I actually have a few tales of treasure hunting. I went uh, to Dimple Records on Arden Way during one of my lunch breaks just to check to see if they have a NES adapter for Brandon because I'm giving him a Nintendo and I wanted him to have the cords for it so we could uh, you know, go along with these challenges and follow along. So I went there not expecting not to find much except for silent service. Which was still there. <laughs> the original one I always see with the faded label, it's still there. When you said silent service, I thought you meant like the dimple people being giving you the silent treatment because oh, they no. always see you in there. No. Uh, yeah, silent service, still there. And then they actually had Gremlins 2, the new batch. Uh, the NES game? The NES game, which I bought a couple months ago at Game and Trade over off of West El Camino. Didn't work, so I went ahead and switched it off for Caveman Games. So I was excited when I pulled, picked up Gremlins to the new batch. So that's weird. You got Gremlins to the new batch movie, and I got the video game. Yeah, that is weird. I didn't even think about it either. And I just saw how much. How much was yours? Three ninety nine. Oh, okay. My my Gremlins two was two ninety nine. No, actually, it was three ninety nine. So that's how much did you pay for it at Game and Trade? Three ninety nine. Oh, okay. So uh, another tale of treasure hunting. I actually have a prize later on in my bag 
for Brandon, I went to the Goodwill outlet, and they they have a Goodwill outlet. You haven't heard of this? No. It's over off of Madison Avenue. <laughs> There's an outlet for the Goodwill. Okay. They sell. The, all they do is they bring out big tubs of crates, you know, like cafeteria tables in school, mm. those long benches. They bring out tubs of those. They whip off the sheet, and you get a dig and dig and find. That sounds hecka tight. Dude, it's so tight. Do they do this every day? Every day. <laughs> This is my second time going. The first time I went with the kids. This time I had Karen with me. She was looking for clothes. No, people don't gather around the clothes. They're, you know, easy pickings. Uh, no one really cares about those. But they'll get to the electronics. And you stand in a line, like a um, cafeteria line. They wheel the long table in front of you. And whoever lines up with that table, they whip the sheet off. And you get first picks. So do you have to get there early? No, they do it constantly throughout the day. When I was there, they probably have, I would say, 40 bins out. The place is so huge. They constantly are moving bins back, bringing new ones out. Is it because people are buying everything in the bins or just that they want a fresh... They want a fresh pickings. Oh, okay. <laughs> they want their fresh pickings. So I was standing there uh, in line. They whipped the sheet off. And so we're digging through it, me and about probably eight other people who's standing in the line. And this one guy next to me, he was a, a tall uh, black guy with man boobs, tank top, very was, overweight. Oh, okay. I was going to ask if he was skinny or not. <laughs> with man boobs? <laughs> he could have been a transsexual or okay. something. So tank top on. Uh, his hair was like kid in play, but it was gray. <laughs> And he's standing, he, he he's looking through stuff, and he, he finds... Like, you, you know the guy in Kid and Play, his name isn't Kid and Play. <laughs> it's either Kid or Play. I believe it's Kid. <laughs> One of those guys with the tall hair. You know what I'm talking about. He, I look over at him, see what he's got. He's got uh, Skeleton's pan Panther. Panther, what's his name? The purple one? Skeleton's Panther. Skeletor. Oh, okay. Oh, He's got Skeletor as Panther? Yeah. Panther? I don't remember his name. Panther is Thundercats. <laughs> Panther, maybe. <laughs> but he's got the Panther, and he's got a, a battle damage He-Man loose, right? Oh, man. But the paint was all worn off of it, oh. so it was, like, pretty much worthless. The, 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 the Panther was purple and black because all the paint was wore off of it. And the He-Man was just looked, tore up anyway. So I looked over at him, trying to mingle, and I go... Oh, you found some He-Man, huh? That's cool. And he looks at me and said, Yeah. And he took them both and put them in like a Tupperware like I was going to try to take them. <laughs> you know if I could, I would have, though, right? Yeah. Get something out of it. Because you pay by the pound. What? $1.39 a pound. That's crazy. We got three... Big old bags of clothes for Jordan, Sam, Logan. I got a pair of Adidas pants, like uh, workout pants. Hecka nice. Jordan got new Nike Jordan shirt. Uh, $20. So are there a lot of people at these things? Sometimes. Hmm. But all you have to do is get in line, and then if the cart that they rule out doesn't match up with you, the next one will because they're, they're in lines, you know. So you're always getting in. You know, once you look... You don't see nothing. You go get at the end of the line and try to get the next bin. Mm. And they're constantly changing these bins out. So we could probably just stand there for a whole day, not find something, and still have a blast. Yeah. So we got to go check that out. Yeah, that, that sounds like a, a, a good uh, time to me. So uh, I, I got a prize for you, but that's going to come up uh, during our top five list. Okay. So the challenge that we're, we did this week, we actually didn't mention it on episode five. Because we really weren't down with the format yet. Uh, Brandon said, why don't you bring over a game? We'll play it together. See how far we could get. And we'll just talk about it on the podcast. So this one actually uh, ties into the answer of our episode 4 quiz. Uh, we want to do quizzes, get you guys involved, win some prizes. At first, you know, they're going to be maybe five, ten dollars $10 gift cards to a place of your choice. We'll mail it to you. Sometimes it'll be treasure we find. 
you could get some signed treasure from us. That's a oh, good idea. Oh yeah, we could sign it. We could sign it and, and put and, and they'll be like, I don't want to see that shit on eBay either. Because yeah. I would buy it now. <laughs> I'll buy it back. Yeah, I'll probably you know buy it back for fifty cents. <laughs> <laughs> Give it back for another price. Uh, so yeah, we could do that. But by now, episode four quiz has been out already. You guys know that it's the the answer. The question was. On the King of Nostalgia quiz game, Brad actually got a question. I actually got a question wrong when Brandon said I was right. And the que- the answer was I actually got the Maniac Mansion question wrong because I said uh, Wendy does the news writing, Sid and Razor do music as their talent, and Bernard does Photoshop. And when I was thinking Bernard and Photoshop, I was kind of thinking computers, uh, he actually does not do the photo developing, that's Michael. So our challenge was Maniac Mansion, we're going to play it, see how good we remember the game, and see how far we could get. How long has it been since you played that game? Uh, pr- probably, how old am I, 31? Mm-hmm. Probably when I was 12. Yeah, so, me, same, same here, we haven't played the game in years, what, 20 years maybe, so uh, we popped it in. Uh, I chose, of course, I choose Dave, and he just sat in the dungeon the whole game. So what, what Maniac Mansion is, is your girlfriend, Dave's girlfriend, gets captured by uh, Dr. Fred in a mansion. Uh, it's actually a, a dwelling of a weird family. Uh, they look ghoulish. They do look ghoulish. Uh, you're in this mansion, you, you yourself, Dave, and... You get recruit two friends at the beginning who have different talents. You go storm the mansion, find how to open all the doors, find where the girlfriend is, and just try to escape with your lives. So Brandon, he chose Dave, the main character, of course. He can't not pick him. He doesn't have any talents. Like Brandon said, we usually get him captured. He goes to the dungeon in the mansion, and he's just there for the rest of the game. Then he also chose Michael who is good at photo development, and Wendy the writer. Uh, you know, going into the game, you recognize what to do automatically right from the bat. If, you have, if you've played the game before, you know you have to pull the mat at, at the opening or at the front door. Uh, you get the key and use the key to open the front door, and you're open to the mansion. Now, this is like a point-and-click computer game. I believe it started on the PC. And it's kind of you use an arrow like a mouse, but you use the control pad to control the arrow. Yeah, so the controls are horrendous. I mean, you have to, you know, use key on front door, open front door, stuff like that. Yeah, you have commands. You have open, you have get, you have give, you have use, you have close, you have turn on, you have turn off, you have, uh, I think I said open already, but you... You pick a command and then you go down to your items and let's say you have a juice box in your in your inventory. You say, you know, use juice box and then you click on the actual game the game screen. There's a plant, use juice box on plant and it says, Hey, I can't do this. This doesn't work seem to work. You're like, no, yeah, no shit. So kinda of one of those games where you have to use the items you find in different situations. Uh kind of a fun game. Yeah different possibilities, different endings, different outcomes. Brandon and I played it so much when we were little. Yeah, and we always chose the same people when we were little. Uh, usually picked Razor, Bernard, and, and Dave. And Dave, yeah. Of or, or, you know, Razor, uh, Jeff, and Dave. So different combinations. We always seemed to use people we knew how to beat the game with. So this time, I decided to use people we really haven't beat the game with and see how far we could get. And I think the only person who cannot contribute into actually beating the game is Jeff, who is a surfer guy. He could fix telephones, he could, but I, I believe he cannot recruit the help of the tentacle, which uh, in, in the game there is a, like a green tentacle. It's basically a giant tentacle off a squid uh, walking around talking. Uh, you need to get his help, and you do that ver- by various forms. Uh, Jeff is pretty much useless, like Dave, except you can fix the telephone, yeah. which you use to, you know, call different people or what have you. But we actually ended up playing the game uh, straight through. Uh, we, you know, I helped Brandon get through a few parts that he couldn't remember. 
you know, you go in, you feed the tentacle, the, the bowl of wax fruit, you feed him the juice box, you get past him. You just, you know, we actually end up finishing the game. We beat the game probably in about half hour to 35 minutes. Uh, once we got on a roll, it was easy to do. And then we were playing around like in the dungeon. I had Dave and Wendy in there because I just had Wendy get captured by Edna so I could sneak into her room with Michael and get some stuff. So then I was in the dungeon. I was like, what happens if I do like open Wendy? What will happen? And then Brad said, uh, what happened? Like turn on Edna. That's a, the guy's wife. So we had a pretty, pretty uh, snickering moment there, yeah. which we really couldn't have when we were kids because we didn't. You know, open Wendy. What does that mean? But now we know what that means. Open Wendy's Gap. <laughs> I don't think they had Gap on there, but they did have Wendy. <laughs> okay, so that was Maniac Mansion for you. We beat the game. I took the purple meteor to the trunk of the family car, blasted him into space with the yellow key. Pretty easy. Uh, Wendy was pretty much useless. Just used her to get captured, and that's about it. Uh, we'll go ahead and move into our top five list for the week. Top five list. Here we go. Top five list. Maybe we should get a theme song for it one of these times. Yeah. Like top five list. Yeah. America. Five five. Top five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, you know, you the top five. So top five list. Uh, what I wanted to do was get you know our top top five list as well as some honorable mentions. Things that actually didn't quite make the list, but could have. Uh, that's the way I looked at it. They could have made the top five list as long as they just gave that little extra. Actually, my top five list, I put some honorable mentions as things that should automatically be on a top five list. But I bumped it down to honorable mention just so I could add some quirky things in my list. Okay. So... Let's go ahead and do this. Um, we're, first, we're going to mention our honorable mentions, mm -hmm. and then we'll go into top five. Top five lists this week. Top five weapons used in video games. Yes. This could be used anywhere from NES all the way up to PS3. I kind of kept mine retro, kind of, uh, but we'll go ahead and start with the honorable mentions. Mm -hmm. What is your first honorable mention, Brandon? Exodia. <laughs> Exodia, all right. That's some weapon so, <laughs> card. <laughs> For those those who, of you who aren't uh, nerdy enough to know, Exodia is in the Yu-Gi-Oh card game. Uh, once you have, there's five pieces to Exodia, his head, his two arms, and his two legs, and they're called left leg of the Forbidden One, right arm of the Forbidden One, and so on. And there's also Exodia, the Forbidden One, which is the head and torso like Voltron. Once you have these five cards in your hand you automatically win whatever game you're playing. Your opponent automatically loses. So what what say you on Exodia? Oh I just I just love it. Uh, the main concept of Yu-Gi-Oh! Each player starts with 8,000 life points. Different ways to win. You could drop them down to zero life points by attacking monsters or attacking their life points directly. You could use a card called the Final Countdown which almost made my list. Exodia, get all five pieces in your hand. It doesn't matter if your opponent has 200 cards in their life deck. If they have 200 million life points, Exodia just automatically wins the game for you. It's hard to accomplish, but I've done it many times. Awesome. What's your first? My first one is going to have to be Donatello's bow from Teenage Mutant oh, Ninja Turtles. Yeah, that's a good one. The reason why it's an honorable mention and not on my top five is if you've played Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for Nintendo, the original one, Donatello is a powerhouse in that game. Of course, the four turtles, Donatello, Leonardo, Michelangelo, and Raphael, they all have their signature weapons. Uh, Leonardo's Katana, Raphael's Psy, Michelangelo's Nunchuck. Raphael and Michelangelo are dead weight. Donatello, his bow is the strongest, and it's the long, it's a long range weapon, so... When you use it, it just hits anything probably about, you know, two or three inches in front of it. So the reason why it's on my top, on my honorable mention, I should say, is because once Donatello dies, your game's pretty much over. It's just not worth it because <laughs> you're going through with Michelangelo. Looks like he's using his dick as a weapon. 
<laughs> and Raphael, who's he, just using, using a, his gap. <laughs> using his gap. <laughs> I think that's why they actually made Raphael stronger in the later series, because, you know, he needed some recognition, because he was the one with the attitude, but... You know, once you were done to those two turtles, I remember many times just turning it off and say, "Oh, I'll play again tomorrow. Yeah. I'll try again later." A lot of people didn't never never beat that game, but we actually did beat it. Oh my goodness! It we, was so hard. Yeah, you know, when you're going through the game. You fight Bebop and Rocksteady on the first level, the second level, the damn level of many of you. As soon the as I damn, mentioned the damn damn level, the damn damn level. As soon as I mentioned damn level, everybody's stomach just goes, "Oh, I remember that." You actually had a time to swim through the dam, swim through the water, and find these little bombs placed all over the level. And you had to go through and swim before they blew up. You got electrified seaweed. You got pits in there. I don't know how there's a pit on a, you know, dam level, but difficult level. Level th it just got difficult from there. You fight the Technodrome on level five. End up getting inside the Technodrome and fighting Shredder. I, I don't know how we beat Shredder, but we beat him and we beat the game. What was your favorite level on that game? I would have to say level 5, the Technodrome. Uh, my favorite was level 4, the airport. I don't know why. Why? I, just, I don't know. I just like the airport level. <laughs> I remember there were some spikes on there that killed us like in one hit. Yeah. The, yeah, that Technodrome was cool to, to fight. Yeah, once you found it, because you had to find the Technodrome. Once you found it, it was cool to finally see. Okay, my next honorable mention is the Tech Bow from Turok. Oh, okay. The reason I picked that is because that was probably the first game where you actually got to use a bow and arrow in first-person perspective and kill enemies with it. Just the ability to zoom in with the Tech Bow and snipe enemies. I almost put the Sniper Rifle for GoldenEye because that served the same purpose. Uh, zooming in, but the tech bow was just so much cooler. You got to hunt with a bow and arrow. Yeah, and that's Turok for Nintendo 64, Turok 1. Yeah. Next one on my list I have is, depending on what version of Final Fantasy 3 you're playing, either called the Atma Weapon or the Ultima Weapon. The reason why this is on the honorable mention list is as you get the, the, the Atma Weapon is the sword. As your hit points go up, as you gain levels, your sword gets stronger and it grows longer like Pinocchio's nose. As soon as you get to the maximum amount of hit points, you get the, a very long sword with each sword strike and a little shadow that goes behind it. But that actually happens before you get to the maximum amount of hit points you could get. The reason it's an honorable mention to me is because as soon as you get to 9999 hit points, that's the maximum hit points you could have in the game, I feel like the sword should have glowed gold or something, but it's just it's still in the same form as you have when when you have about seven thousand hit points. It does the same thing, so that's why it, I, it didn't make my top five. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Okay, I have one more honorable mention. Uh, it's the silver spoon dagger oh, from Final nice. Fantasy II. Very strong weapon. If thrown, it takes maximum damage, which is nine thousand nine hundred and ninety nine. On any enemy, even the final boss, Zero Miss. So, you know, you get the Silver Swim Dagger, you keep it for the whole game, you finally get to the last boss, throw it, and that's, you know, a, a max hitter right there. So, the reason why it's on, not on the top fives is just the chore it is to get it. You have to go and talk to Yang's wife, you have to go and talk to Yang, who's presumed dead, but you find him, then you have to go back to Yang's wife and say, oh no, he's alive. Then you, she says, okay, here, hit him on the head with the frying pan if you won't wake up. You go back to his sleeping yang, hit him on the head with the frying pan. He says, oh, thank you for waking me up. You go get back to the yang's wife, and she gives you the silver spoon dagger. So that's why it's on my list, because it's such a chore to get. And actually, that's part of the treasure hunting that I wanted to share with you, Brandon. I actually got you a present while I was treasure hunting at the Goodwill outlet. It is a silver spoon. Oh, tight. Pure, it, uh, it looks like pure silver to me. It's a very odd, distinguished spoon, but why don't you go ahead and take a look at that spoon? It has some history there. Yeah, it's got dents. You see the the underside of the spoon, how it looks like it's been torched with a lighter quite some time? <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. This is a heroin spoon. 
Okay. <laughs> this has... Why do you smell it? <laughs> Just seeing if you can smell the heroin. Let me see. So this spoon, I was walking by one of the bins. I was, you know, done with my treasure hunting, going to go join Karen to look at some clothes. And I just see this spoon laying in a bin. I was like, oh, I'm going to see if that's pure silver. Because it might be. You know, I, I look at the spoon and I'm like, hey, this this might be pure silver. You know, pretty good spoon. And then I saw in the middle of the spoon where you scoop, scoop up your cereal, there's a dent raised, like a little bump. Like someone's been lighting fire underneath the bottom of the spoon. And I said, this is a heroin spoon. I'm going to get it for Brandon. At first I wanted to keep it. But Karen said, no, I don't want a heroin spoon in my house. <laughs> so you might want to wash it because I haven't washed it yet. Oh, but okay. that's your silver spoon. Tight. Oh, and I did have one more honorable mention. I have a feeling it's going to come up on the list from you. I just wanted to give a shout out to the Master Sword from Legend of Zelda. So let's go get into our top five weapons. Uh, thought very hard about this. Thought very long and hard. And actually what I went for here are weapons that I just that that I just love to use. Mm. And you know when I when I used it I was like, yeah, it just made me feel like a man to use it. Yeah. So, did you want to go first or did you want Sure. To okay. My uh number 5 would have to be the Vampire Killer. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, good choice from Castlevania. Yeah. Very good choice. Uh whether it be Simon Belmont wielding the whip of killing vampires or even um Gabriel from Lords of Shadow, his form of the vampire killer, it was just always fun to use. Uh, tackling death or, you know, the Grim Reaper, Dracula, just no one could stand the power of vampire killer, unless, except for those Medusa heads. Yeah, the Medusa heads. I was playing Castlevania the other day. Don't even get me started on those Medusa heads. And actually, just talking about the vampire killer is like, Making me have such a, a testosterone surge. Yeah. It's like getting me like, yeah, the vampire killer. I want to buy one. I want to make one and buy one and yeah. use it. It just makes you feel good just to say it, the vampire killer. And walk around one day and just say vampire killer and see if anyone ever turns around and says, just like gives you that nod. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. I have yet to find someone that to actually turn around and give me that nod. But one day. On my list... Uh, I have a chair. A chair. A chair from NWO versus WCW. <laughs> oh, yeah. The reason why I liked the chair is when you hit someone with that chair, it actually dented and like, <laughs> boom. You just hit someone in the head it with a chair. It was gratifying. And it was so gratifying. Like, ooh, I got you with the chair. Now I'm going to pin you. Yeah. Not much to say about that. It's just hitting someone in the head with a chair is awesome. Who is your favorite player? playable character on NWO, WCW, or WCW? Uh, I'd have to say uh, Raven. Oh, yeah. Because our friend Aaron used to like him, and we found out that if you could run in the turnbuckle with him, he actually sits down. He does that in real life as well. Yeah. I like the Black Ninja. Even though Raven was cool, I liked the Black Ninja because he did all the karate moves. Number four uh, for me is a scimitar, or Zantetsuken. From Final Fantasy VI. Yes. Great weapon. Yeah, when had a probability of, uh, even though pretty small, when you hit an enemy with it, it could automatically kill them. And you could tell it killed them because it showed little dice marks go across their body. And you're like, oh yeah, that's instant death for you. You just got Zenta suit and can Exactly, however you say it. And uh, once you pair that with the offering and the Genji glove, oh, yeah. you got four chances that with each attack to randomly kill one opponent. Yeah. Take that to the Coliseum, and you're just like, bow, there you go. <laughs> you're dead. The next one on my list is a microwave. Oh, from Maniac Mansion? Yes. Yeah. Uh, the microwave in Maniac Mansion is a weapon used to actually kill a hamster. You go and get Weird Ed's hamster from his room, you sneak in there and grab it, and we found out you could put it in the microwave, close the door, and turn it on. Some people in the game did not do this, depending on what characters you picked. If you picked Wendy... Or a girl, in general. <laughs> no, Razor does it. Oh. <laughs> Wendy or uh, Bernard, I think, does not blow the hamster up, but if you picked Sid 
or someone who you know has an evil side to them razor falls to the wall <laughs> falls to the wall they're hitting that microwave on button with their balls <laughs> turning it on just pow zaps the hamster a little it looks like a jelly stain on the glass door of the microwave the hamster blows up and you're just like good night hamster <laughs> Good night, Shadow. <laughs> it's dedicated for you, buddy. Uh, next on my list, I've got the Catfish Jewel. I almost put that. Lufia 2, the Catfish Jewel. You don't know how many times we've tried to kill that dang catfish to get his jewel. So you encounter a giant catfish as a boss on Lufia 2. Second boss? Second boss. Great role playing game. Uh, turn based attacks. You you fight the catfish. Uh, he has a probability of dropping an item which is called the catfish jewel. Yeah so uh, once you got that catfish jewel you were set pretty much for the first quarter to the first half of the game. Um, made battles way easier. It, battles weren't hard, but they were kind of long and tedious sometimes, especially at a group of enemies you were fighting. Well, guess what? Bust out that catfish jewel, use a spell earthquake. So, catfish jewel, uh, once you get hit on Lufia, you have three bars. You have a hit points bar, a magic bar, and an IP bar. Don't know what the IP stands for. Probably efficiency points or something. Uh, as the enemies hit you, that IP bar fills up. Once you get enough IP, you could go into and select an item and use its special power, the Catfish Jewel. It would only take a sliver of your IP to use it, and it would just wipe out the whole battlefield. Yep. Great item, great weapon. Next one on my list I have is going to be the Massimune. Massimune. I don't know how you pronounce it. I say Massimune. And found this on plenty of Squaresoft games, plenty of other games, Legendary Sword, the Mass Immune. Where I find it most gratifying to play with is with Chrono Trigger. Yep. And Mass Immune is held by, eventually held by Frog, who is a human turned into a frog. Think Ninja Turtle, but instead it's a frog. A big human frog form. Uh, very chivalrous, very honorable character. One of my favorite characters in all video games history. Has a great theme song. I recommend you listen to it. YouTube it up and listen to that theme song. It's one of the best you'll ever hear. But Frog, uh, he'll go by and, you know, it's a role playing game, so your character's on the screen. You attack the enemies. He'll go over and take a couple hops to the enemy, cut him, and hop back. But when he hits that critical, yep. he jumps with a ferocious, with the most ferocious jump I've ever seen anyone, stab that enemy downward. Then he'll do a backflip and <laughs> cut him again. An upward slash or a backflip. slash with a backflip. Best move I've ever seen on Chrono Trigger. Beats out all the spells that I've seen. He, when you hit that critical, he just goes and just slashes down and backflip the fuck up and just cuts their head <laughs> off. But that critical hit, YouTube it, you probably could watch it for hours like I could. Yeah. When he, what The scene that sticks out most in my mind is he's... You know, a downfallen hero. He doesn't know what to do with his life. You bring him the Massa Moon, and he's like, "All right, well, let. I guess we could go kill Magus right now since we have this special weapon." And so he can't equip it yet. So then, you know, you're walking to uh, the cave, the entrance to the cave where Magus lives, where it's, they call him the Fiend Lord, where the Fiend Lord lives. And this is early on in the game. You think Magus is going to be some, you know, last boss, but he's not. So you walk up to the cave, and there's no entrance whatsoever. Prono puts a sword in the ground, and then his frog, his theme music starts playing, and he walks over to the sword, and he gives this heroic speech, saying he's come to slay the fiend lord, and he just slices the cave open with that sword. You're like, fuck yeah! Now it's time to time to rock with this sword. Shit just got real. Oh, man. It got real two times. Got my blood thumping. Oh, man. My number two weapon, Sword of the Kings from Earthbound. Oh, I've never gotten that Yeah, sword. and that's why I put it on here. It's so hard to obtain, or you just have to be lucky. Uh, Earthbound, we've talked about it in previous podcasts. Uh, there's this 
character that joined you. He's the last character to join you named Pooh. Pooh. Yeah, Pooh. Like the turd. Yeah. He, he fights barehanded throughout the whole game. He doesn't need any weapon except you can get him the Sword of the Kings. And I think you get it for fighting a Starman. Super Starman. Star, Starman Super. You have to beat the Starman Super, and out of one out of every 128 drops, you'll get the Sword of the Kings. But even those guys are tough to run into. So my number two, I'm going to take it down to Super Metroid. And I could say many of weapons, I could say screw attack. But nothing's more gratifying than hitting something with the Super Missile. I almost put Super Missile on there. The Super me. Missile, when, you know, you have Metroid when you have your normal missiles, you know, you, you just hear, doom, doom, doom. And it's, you know, just the missile is going across when you launch your missiles. But when you get that Super Missile, it's like, boom, right in your face fucking face yeah especially quaid no, yeah you get a few super missiles when you fight quaid but you actually get to unload all your super missiles onto ridley at near the end of the game you just open and here's super missiles in your face just eat these super missiles and you're just shooting them left and right boom 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 and when you shoot when you make contact the whole screen shakes and you're like yeah take another one who was that one monster in the lava in norfair the lava monster the lava monster that's his name no it's like it starts with an m i think or uh, something i don't remember but yeah when you got that super missile and you even when i found it more gratifying to shoot the super missile at red leaf than i did shoot the hyper beam at mother brain so my number one was the master moon from colonel trigger oh that's tight yeah so we talked about that okay so we did talk about that and my number one is actually the master sword and the master sword that I chose was I was thinking about Link to the Past where you get the three pennants and you you know release the master sword but after playing all the Zelda games Skyward Sword when you start with that you know that little wimp sword you have mm -hmm. the goddess sword or whatever I don't remember what it's yeah. called I was thinking man are they going to introduce the master sword I think it's called the faggy sword the faggy sword <laughs> the official term the faggy goddess sword um I was thinking, man, uh, are they going to introduce the Master Sword? You know, I haven't seen Ganon yet. I haven't seen anything, you know. they got to do something. So every time you beat a boss, your sword starts growing a little bit. Uh, you beat, fight a couple more bosses, your sword grows a little more. And then on the last few bosses, your sword starts sprouting open. I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah. Look at it. That's going to be the Master Sword. We're playing through the game. First official... It's supposed to be in the first timeline, the first time Link uses the Master Sword. So you're, you're playing through, you find another boss, you, you get stronger, you almost get the Master Sword. The end of the game, you don't get it. Usually on Zelda games, you get the Master Sword in the middle of the game quite early on. But at the very end of the game, you unlock the true Master Sword. And as soon as I unlocked that Master Sword, I was like, oh, it's on. <laughs> I felt so invincible. You can still die in the game, but I felt like there's nothing that's going to stop me now. No monster is going to... I have the Master Sword. What are you guys going to do? I remember going up to Demise and uh, again and whatever his name was. I'd be like, oh, you can't touch me. I got the Master Sword. I whooped their asses. I pulled out that Master Sword. I felt like... This is what I felt like with the Master Sword. I felt like the Incredible Hulk, Falcon Punched, <laughs> Mr. Glass from Unbreakable in the face. <laughs> That's what I felt like when I grabbed the Master Sword and just the pure holding it in the with the Wii Remote in my hand as I unleashed the power of the Master Sword and finally got it in my hands and it said true, power, true Master Sword or whatever. I was like, this is what Link must have felt like when he first got the Master Sword because I just felt like the Wii Remote was surging with power and I was like, I'm ready to finish this game. Let's, let's do it. And I think that's one of the only times... My kids heard me screech like a little girl. I was sitting there. Naja was next to me, watching me play Legend of Zelda, and uh, I was like, and I was sitting there with the, you know, the uh, beating the game, and I get to the part where it sprouts open, and the Master Sword is revealed, and I screeched so loud, and I was like, "It's the Master Sword!" And she was like, "What's that?" I like, "Look, it's the Master Sword!" and you know, me thinking she had the knowledge I do about Legend of Zelda games. She just looked at it and said, "Isn't that the Goddess Sword or whatever?" It's the fact. Isn't what's that, a Master Sword? What's isn't that the Faggy Sword? Isn't that what you call it, Dad? But no. Um, 
yeah, that just seeing that master sword was amazing. It, it was amazing, and and I got teary eyed when I actually saw it because I wanted something from the old games to to come over, uh, Ganon or something. And when I saw the master sword, it it made me get teary eyed a little bit because it's just something that connected me to the past games. So that does it for our top five list. A uh, very good list. Very excited to talk about it. Had a surge of testosterone. I was just gonna go home and do some push-ups and eat some steak, <laughs> and then go and kick the door open and be like, "Karen, your lumberjack's home." <laughs> Full on uh, stepbrothers moment. <laughs> oh, lumberjack! I'm here to plant my seed. <laughs> open, Karen. Open, Karen. <laughs> gap. <laughs> Force. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so now here comes the part of the podcast where we're going to talk about process of losing weight, getting in shape, getting in better health. I've kind of already started the process. Ooh, look at me. I'm hoity-toity. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're just going to incorporate that word into every podcast. <laughs> yeah, because I say it wrong every time. <laughs> I'm going to keep saying it until I say it right. Hooty tooty. Hooty hoody, tweety. Watch that. That goes back to my speech problem. <laughs> Maybe self-conscious. There's not an R in that word. There, sounds like there is when I say it. <laughs> Hoody toddy. <laughs> so, uh, I've actually been uh, already lifting weights. And I've got about four weeks of weightlifting done. I try to do cardio three to four times a week. The past few weeks has only been about two times a week. Um, my weight training consists of... Slacker. Yeah, I, I'm, I have been slacking. I didn't, didn't go to the gym yesterday or the day before or today. Program, uh, weight program, do six days a week of weights. Three upper body, three lower body, alternating uh, days. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday will be upper. Tuesday, Thursday... Saturday would be lower body. Sunday day it would be day of rest. Maybe I'll rest on Saturday. I'm not sure yet. Uh, I want to do cardio. I do cardio. Uh, I want to start doing it in the morning because that's when you burn the most fat is when you don't have any carbs in your system or in your stomach. Do 20 laps of um, freestyle swimming. I used to do um, 12 laps of freestyle and in between I'd incorporate two laps of breaststroke, two uh, backstroke, uh, just, you know, different exercises, but freestyle is the one that gets my heart going and keeps me tired, so I'm going to hit the sauna and also work core three, four times a week as well. So are you going to, what, what are you going to be doing? I'm going to be doing that. You're going to swim? <laughs> <laughs> just whatever you said. No, I, I want to start swimming, um, do some breaststroke, do some freestyle, uh, do the weights. Uh, you gave me the weight regimen. I've actually been beefing up here. Beefing up meaning just eating what I want the past few days ever since we introduced this new segment. Yeah. Just because I wanted to start big and then so it'll be easier for me to lose. Yeah, so when we... I thought about this too. I said, I said let's do... Let's hold ourselves accountable. Um, so yesterday I just went all out. I went to Fuji Sushi Boat Buffet and... I just ate as much as I could. I haven't been to a buffet in I don't know how long, probably a few months. And tis no man. Yeah, tis no man, but a beast. Let's see, we say that based off of the old Simpsons episode, I think in season three. Homer goes to an all-you-could-eat seafood restaurant owned by the old sea boat captain, and he's just dying to go there with Marge, and that's the way I feel when I go to Oz with Karen, is I just want to go there and eat as much meat as I can, Oz Korean barbecue. Uh, like us on Facebook, please. Will be your fan as well. Do uh, they have Facebook? Probably. <laughs> uh, yeah, and he's eating there, eating all the seafood, and the sea, old seafood captain's like, oh, "You gotta go, man. You, you've ate so, you've ate your limit. You have your fill. We're gonna go out of business." Homer's nowhere <laughs> full at all. He's still hungry. He's still eating, and <laughs> so the seaboat captain he just looks at him, goes up to the back, and he goes, "Tis no man." To the beast. Yeah, so whenever we talk about buffets, we, we always tend to say that. And this actually happened to us. Uh, there used to be a sushi buffet named Homei Sushi. Uh, you go there, you order five things. Uh, 
you know, California roll, whatever roll you want off of their menu. You could even order nigiri sushi, which they had good nigiri sushi. They had good maguro tuna. See, that's what I miss. I missed out on that when I I really didn't get into sushi at that time. Uh, so whenever we'd go to Home, I'd always order Chinese food. But I wouldn't. But now I love the raw stuff. Um, you know, the wasabi I like. I like you know the traditional japanese sushi as well as the american sushi with all the sauces on the rolls and spicy miso yeah so we go to home and we see they have chinese food as well we order a few rolls but then we see was it a number 21 or 22 uh i think it's 21 you get a number 21 which is your own personal order of honey walnut shrimp and for those of you who had honey walnut shrimp you know it's the bee's knees yeah deep fried shrimp in a s- sweet mayo type sauce honey mayo sauce honey mayo sauce deep fried battered and crispy and delicious so brandon and i were sitting there uh yeah we'll take uh two more 21s a uh you know maguro and you want to tack on another extra 21 (laughs) as well and we just sit there and they had a 90 minute time limit Brandon and I were looking at the waitresses. They were looking at us, looking at the clock, seeing how long we've been there, just watching us. And we were just sitting there like, okay, if we stay the full 90 minutes, that's just gluttonous. (laughs) So we bounced at 85 minutes. So that's our buffet moment. Um, What about Chun King? Chun King, this is a fabulous story. Chun King is a dirty, rotten, for those of you who've been there, for those who are not, dirty, oil, greasy, rotten Chinese food, what they do is they actually get your buffet leftovers, scrape it into a pan, and make egg rolls out of it. That's how bad it is. Is that proven? It's bread proven. <laughs> so, the, the Chinese food, if you want to have a stomachache afterwards, go ahead and check <laughs> it out. Watton Arden, Chun King, C-U-H-U-N-K-I-N-G. Don't is know it, where the king is at that place, <laughs> but it's definitely not the Chun. Is it Wat and Alta Arden or Wat and Arden? Somewhere over there. Okay. It's not Wat and Arden. Wat and Arden used to be Black Angus at Western General. It's the street before the bad street, the ghetto street. So me and Brandon go there a few years ago, probably five years ago. Was Karen away at Disneyland or she something? She was away at Disneyland, and we were just like, this when you were living with us. We are like, all right, what buffet do we want to hit up tonight? That we don't go to when Karen's here. <laughs> And that was Chun King. It's like, uh, you know, on Friday when Smokey and um, Craig. Craig are walking down the street and they both turn to each other like, and the car's rolling by and they're like, drive by! At the same time, <laughs> Brandon and I looked at each other, light bulb went off, Chun King! <laughs> so we both went to Chun King. Did we have the kids? No. We didn't. Okay. Karen had them. We, had, we were bachelors that weekend. Oh, man. With Chun King, we ate our fill. You can't get too much. You can't stay 85 minutes there. If you stay 85 minutes there, <laughs> you'll die. You will die. <laughs> you'll have a heart attack. You'll blow a gasket. Your ass will bleed out. You'll die. Yeah, you pick up the egg roll. The egg rolls are nice size too, and you you hold it, you know, at, to to the corners pointing down. And you just see the grease pouring out of the egg roll, and we just saw that was a we ate you know our share of egg rolls there. So Brandon and I eat our fill, probably there a half hour, start feeling full. So we, we pay for our meal. It's like five dollars total. <laughs> <laughs> Two fifty a pop. Yeah. So we pay, we leave, we go to the parking lot and if you've seen Chun King, they have windows all around their establishment. Huge windows. Huge windows. If you're sitting down anywhere in the restaurant, you could look out the window. Have a nice view. Yeah, you'll have a nice view of Brandon and Brad puking their guts out in front of you. <laughs> Brandon and I went outside, started feeling a little queasy. <laughs> one of us started gagging. I don't know which one. Probably me. I go, I'm going to puke. <laughs> so Brandon's like, you are? No shit, you're going to puke? I'm like, I'm going to puke. <laughs> There's no bathroom. I'm outside by the car. So I'm like, all right, here it goes. <laughs> And that's how I puke. I'm a very noisy puker. <laughs> Start spraying exorcist, exorcist, Chun King food out of my mouth, out of my nose, maybe a little bit out of my ass. So I'm sitting there puking streams, and Brandon's like, oh, now you're making me throw up. And he starts puking, 
And it's like we're standing face to face, probably five feet apart, and we're just puking streams. Yeah, we're not, we don't turn away to puke. We don't, you know, run to the bushes. We're right there in the parking lot, just puking. Puke, like, don't cross the streams. Oh, man. And we look over, and there's people in the restaurant looking over at us while we throw up in front of their establishment. Yeah, we're looking at them thinking, yeah, this is going to be you in, two, <laughs> in 10 minutes. You're going to be out here puking too. But uh, it was just the funniest thing to be puking like that and them just watching us. And we're just like, have no shame. Nope. We're just set out blasting the parking lot up. And, you know, when we were done, we just got in the car and left. We didn't think nothing else of it. Nope. So that that's... That's your our chunking story. So basically, what I did was I went and ate um, yesterday. I ate Chinese food because I knew that was salty and it would get my weight up. I haven't taken my water pills in the past <laughs> three days. My the most weight I've ever weighed was three eighty six. That was the most I've ever weighed. Quite surprised when I got on the scale and it's three fifty nine. So that means eating all that bad food, probably somewhere around three fifty four. Hmm. So, still doing good. Um, you know, lost 30 pounds in the past year. Uh, still want to lose enough to get on that Wii Fit because I'm so <laughs> pissed off. I remember that when I came over and you're like, it probably won't register for you because you, you, you can't weigh more than 330 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> and you were like 330 on the daughter's Like, like 323 or something. I was so pissed. I was like, well, why, why are we fit going to give you a weight limit? Yeah, the most I ever weighed was, I think, 360. And that was when I was eating. I'd spend, like, I was single. I My apartment was pretty cheap. I lived alone before I got married. I paid, like, 750 a month for rent. So I had all this extra money, so I decided to waste it on food. I'd go to uh, Wasabi, the sushi place that off of Greenback that's just... Then you get the Uncle Ron roll or something. What was it called? The Ron Ron, Ron, Ron roll. The Ron Ron roll. Yeah, but that had two tempura shrimps in it. Yeah, or I I get that. I get the. I'd spend like forty fifty bucks on sushi, and as you know, if you eat any type of Asian food, it doesn't fill you up, or it fills you up, but it doesn't last long. So then I'd go out at night. I'd get, hmm, maybe Burger King tonight, or maybe Adalberto's. Red Robin with the onion ring. Oh. Sauce. You could drink you some Red Robin oh, onion sauce. On the, on the way home, I'd get Red Robin. I'd get the Whiskey River chicken burger, but I'd get the patty deep fried <laughs> with an extra box of fries. And Cause the, you get unlimited fries there. That place yeah. is no joke. And if you want to go and have yourself some French fries, go to Red Robin. And I'd get it to go, so I'd tell him to pack me an bo- extra box of fries. <laughs> Bitch, better pack me an extra box of French fries. And don't forget my onion ring sauce. Uh, once I got that, I, it was heaven. You have that with the good movie and you're set yep, for the exactly. night. exactly. You're set. And then when the food runs out, you go out and get dessert. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, right now I weigh... I I thought I um, would have gained more from yesterday, but I went from... Last I weighed myself was 302. I'm up to... 308 about so uh so hopefully we could lose some weight on this uh, maybe make it into a challenge yeah I, i'd like to you know I, i'm ready for it now this morning i went to crickets off of auburn boulevard went out to breakfast i got a, a good lean meal i got a um small steak some uh eggs over easy i ate the egg white Can wow you believe that? that's crazy i do not like me no egg whites but when i get them over easy i put a whole egg on a one little piece of toast, and I just devour the whole thing in one bite. The yolk explodes in my mouth. I'm like, ooh, that's so good. See, that's funny. When I used to go to Brookfields, uh, Mike Bunton and I would go to Brookfields every Saturday when I was living with him, and we I get the chicken fried steak and the two eggs over easy. Yep, chicken fried steak is good there. Yeah. If you haven't got it, if you like yourself some chicken fried steak, go there and get it. They hand bread it. It's a huge portion, big as your face. So what I would do is I'd order the chicken fried steak. One day I was like, you know what? Let me order this way. Chicken fried steak, eggs over easy, white toast. Can you please put the two eggs over easy in between my white toast? And Mike looked at me and he said, that's just so tight. And I was like, <laughs> I'm tired of doing it myself. I always break the <laughs> I always break the yolk or you know something goes wrong. So I just let them do it. And if the yolk breaks, they'll remake it. Uh, maybe we could think of 
a challenge where whoever loses the most weight and none of that body percentage weight losing that people tend to do well, that's just bullshit so skinny people would win stuff <laughs> that's all that is yeah but but that's gonna suck for you because i've i've got the most weight to lose so i'll drop it like it's hot I, well i hope you do so you so whoever wins gets we could think of either like a monetary a game of their choice a few corn dogs oh yeah corn dogs on air corn dogs oh uh, have nick there so he could tape it yeah so uh, I can't really think of anything else bad I, I've ate. Um, I'm going to have to stay away from the tortas. Tortas. Uh, haven't had a torta in a while, so I'm doing good there. Another one of my weaknesses is Carl's Jr.'s Charboiled Burgers. Mm. Those I could just... I remember one time uh, I was on a diet, and I, I was like, fuck it, I'm going to go get a... Not a famous star, but I'm going to go get a superstar with no oh, pickles. Man. you got to hold the pickles. So I remember getting that... I got that shit peeled out of the parking lot, went down to behind Dimple, so no one would see me. <laughs> went, went behind the Dimple Arden in my parked car, tore that burger open, and as I was taking a bite, I felt so much saliva just shoot out. <laughs> like, my mouth was drooling, and I just went, <sighs> just ate that burger. But remember that time when we were on a diet at Health Net? Yep. And I was just thinking about this. And so... Brandon and I were on a diet, and... What were we doing? Which diet? I can't remember. Some diet. Some Weight Watchers? Weight Watchers, probably. Which is a pretty good diet, if you get the points, but... We were like, dude, we're, I, I'm jonesing for something. We need to we need to go get a Big Mac. And we drove home. Uh, on our way home, we stopped at the Greenback. We carpooled the Greenback and uh, Diablo McDonald's over by Andrea. Stopped there. I said, Brandon... <laughs> The, the drive through line was too long, and I couldn't <laughs> wait that long. We parked, almost parked in a handicapped spot, but got, went over one more. I'm like, Brandon, you go in there, get the get the uh, Big Mac, and as he was leaving to go inside the store to get it, I rolled down there and I thought, get a couple packets of ketchup, and he kept running with his thumb raised up like, you got it. Came back with the Big Mac. I feel sorry for that Big Mac because I remember one of us was holding it and we were both taking bites off of it until there was nothing left. Drinking the ketchup out of the packet, not even, just pouring it in our mouth at, as the Big Mac is getting chewed up. No time, to, no time to put the ketchup on the Big Mac, just mix it up in the mouth. We just went and devoured it. There was like no no sign of that Big Mac left. <laughs> no little strings of lettuce in the cardboard box. No onions. No, no onions on the side of the box. No pieces of cheese on the box. We used our fingernail <laughs> and ripped that shit out. It just got devoured, and that's just how compulsive we could be. Is you know we like our food and. We just need to stay in control because when we go off the deep end like that, you're off eating a dozen Krispy Kreme donuts on your way to... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, I was doing Atkins for the longest time. Uh, probably dropped more weight than I should have. My friends at Domino's, where I used to work, said I looked like I was sick on cancer. I think I weighed 240, but still, they said I was way too skinny. Yeah, we're we're big, broad men beasts. Yeah, broad we're, shoulders. We're meant to be big. If we weighed 100 pounds, we'd probably die. If we weighed even a buck 80, we'd probably go in the hospital because we're just so big, largely built. You know, being on Atkins, I one day I was like, you know what? I I think I've been doing I've been doing it for about six months. I think I could, you know, I deserve some 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 sugar. So. I on the way home from Domino's, I believe I stopped at Krispy Kreme Donuts and got a dozen cream-filled donuts. And right now, even my mouth is just <laughs> getting wet from thinking about Didn't it. Didn't you get a dozen cream-filled and a dozen glazed? I don't remember. I I just remember get, I I went over to Brad's house. I ate two, and I said, you know what? I'm going to leave these donuts here. <laughs> So I don't go home and eat them all on my own. At this time, I wasn't living with Brad. This was in the dark times. I would keep hinting at the dark times, but I was living with some bad people. Stuck in a lease. So um, I said, I'm going to go home, leave these here, because I want to eat them all. And that was around what, 10 o'clock at night? Yep. So what happened the next morning? <laughs> so the next morning, Brandon pulls up, like, I think around 6 o'clock in the morning, 
and I'm like, what the heck, is there an emergency? It's like, he's never, why is he stopping by, you know, he's supposed to be going to work. So he knocks on the door and says, what's up with them donuts? <laughs> he was calling back to get the rest of the donuts. Which I did. Which he came and gave us, and, and we <laughs> ate like a couple, and like, he just came and, and snatched the donuts bag, and he took them and ate them on the way to work. On the way to work. Didn't even eat them at work. I was sitting there driving my stick shift with the donut in one hand, <laughs> just, oh, it was so good. For next week, what Brad and I are going to do is play Mega Man 1. Fun game. I almost picked part two, but I just figured we'd go in order. So this time, Mega Man 1. What, what, are, the, what are we going to challenge them for? Just beat it in one sitting. Oh, man. So you guys beat it with one sitting. Uh, you may have to use emulator. I know it's a hard game to find. They have it on Wii. So uh, what we're going to challenge you to do is play as much as you can through Mega Man. Should we give them the um, boss order they should fight? No. Okay. You, you cheaters. You can't. Well, you, I guess they could look it up <laughs> if they yeah. wanted to. If a true person wouldn't look it up. But what you may have to emulate it, like I said. Um, you know, just Google NES emulator. I won't be emulating it because I practice with purists. Um, but play it on the emulator. You know, no save states. Don't use any save states. Uh, play it how you would uh, original NES. The original NES cart had no passwords, had no saving. You had to beat it in one sitting. So go ahead and do that. See how far you can get. It'd be cool if you, you know, post... You know how far you got. You know we want you guys to play along with us. Uh, what we actually do is we have a question for you, our weekly trivia question. If you guys get this right, you guys get a prize. First one to post it on our Facebook. Uh, don't care if you look it up. Uh, you know if you know it by heart, great. If you need to go search for it, uh, just post it on our Facebook page. First person to post it, actually, will get. A ten dollar gift card of your choice. You let us know where you want a gift card. We'll go buy it for you and we'll mail it to you. And uh, <clears throat> even if you do need help looking up, just let us know. Say, hey, tough question out there. I was able to figure it out myself, or hey, I looked online. It'd be cool if you could just, you know, keep and, it honest. Yeah, and maybe uh, what we could do is <clears throat> for uh, two prizes. If you actually post the answer, we'll put your name in a raffle. We'll raffle are you off? for a five dollar gift card okay so first one to post the answer wins ten dollar gift card then uh, whoever posts after that and including the person get put in a raffle and get a five dollar gift card this week's question gonna be a Mega Man question Mega Man 2 what weapon do you use to defeat the alien form of Dr. Wily uh, only one weapon out there go ahead and post it you'll get a prize go ahead and post it right It'll be a raffle to win another prize. So go ahead and let us know, and we'll go ahead and get rolling on this. So this will wrap up this week's edition of uh, Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. Uh, this is Brandon signing off. This is Brad. Happy hunting. All right, folks. See you later. Bye.